Honourable Gerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, this uh, debate this afternoon is somewhat unusual in so much as it's usually the case in a ministerial statement that only the leaders of parties of more than six members are able to make a contribution. The Business Committee made a decision yesterday that it should be a broad debate because of the nature of it. And that was a decision made unanimously by all members of the Business Committee. So, Mr Speaker, I do want to uh, make that statement so that those who might be observing the debate realise that all of the Parliament recognises uh, the gravity of the announcement made by the Prime Minister today. We are, sir, uh, having this debate because the government is responding uh, to a threat from the Islamic State of Iraq in Le and the Levant. Mr Speaker, I think what is a little bit missing uh, in some of the commentary this afternoon is that this is an organisation that respects no boundaries. This is an organisation that has declared a caliphate, an organisation that has a big reach into countries throughout the world calling on disaffected uh, uh, people who would want to uh, somehow support them to engage in terrorist activities. And the numbers that were given in his speech today by the Prime Minister, somewhat unusually, I might add, Mr Speaker, indicate that their reach has reached our shores as well as the shores of many other countries. And so for us to turn a blind eye and say that we are a country that respects freedom, <coughs> we're a peace-loving country that respects uh, people's ability to do whatever they like, would be to put at risk the lives of New Zealanders uh, without recognising, Mr Speaker, that those who we seek to protect, in the case of the contributions made by one party here today, would be the very people who would seek to destroy the freedoms that we have. Mr Speaker, I just have to make a comment about the uh, headline that's currently running on the Fairfax uh, website. It says that uh, we are at war. Mr Speaker, I think that's an extremely irresponsible uh, headline to have run. I think that the four journalists who have attached their name to it uh, need to reconsider the offering that they are putting in front of the public in light of the full speech that they listened to uh, given by the Prime Minister. Sir, this is not a war in a conventional sense at all. This is about New Zealand taking some steps to protect New Zealanders here in our own country. And when it comes to the objections that people might want to raise about our military personnel looking at what we might do in regards to capacity building in Iraq, let's be clear that legitimate governments in all countries around the world contribute to our general security. <coughs> New Zealanders travel a lot. New Zealanders are in many countries throughout the world. And in all of those places, if this organisation is allowed to run rampant, then their security is compromised. Mr Speaker, there have been suggestions today that some of the information that's come out has been in the form of a hint. I think Annette King said a drip feed with a small amount of humanitarian aid. The Honourable Winston Peters suggested it was lacking detail, yet at the same time called for caution. And that also was a theme from uh, Annette King. In a way, they're both right, because this has been an evolving situation. If you went back, sir, 12 months, this is an organisation that no one had really heard of. Yet in that short period of time, the reign of terror that they have inflicted upon the world is such that it's never been seen before. And I wonder, sir, how anyone can understand uh, the, or, or can promote the idea that there can be an organisation in the world that respects no boundaries, that encourages domestic terrorism uh, at large, and that videos and promulgates its uh, activities, uh, killing innocent people, beheading innocent people, etc., uh, can somehow be sort of not considered a threat uh, to us here in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, I do, though, want to uh, thank the Labour Party, uh, New Zealand First, uh, the uh, uh, Māori Party, the ACT Party, uh, for, and the United Party, were saying that they will support those extra moves for us to deal with uh, the intelligence community throughout the world. Mr Speaker, my colleague will speak further on that. 
We'll also, sir, engage in diplomacy wherever possible to try and make a difference. But in the end, sir, it is going to be the countries that are most affected by this, and initially Iraq, that needs to stand up and do the business of putting this uh, group of people. And I hesitate to use the word ISIL or even Islamic State because it infers that all those who are followers of Islam are somehow marked by this. And that's not something that I believe or, I, or anyone in this parliament, I'm sure, would believe, sir. So this terrorist organisation does need to be stopped. And a first port of call, it would seem, will be uh, for Iraq itself uh, to be able to have the strength to overcome the oppression of these people. So we do have uh, some people in the Middle East who are looking at what we might be able to do to assist with that. I reject the statement by Winston Peters that a decision has been made. It has not. But without good information, without on-the-ground intelligence, and without a decent assessment of what's possible, uh, then we could not make a decision. And it would be, I think, remiss of us to simply rely on information that we got from others. So yes, we have some people who are going to make some inquiries on our behalf. And I think, sir, that is totally appropriate. I just make the point, sir, that uh, we do have to be a great deal more vigilant given what uh, we now all know from the Prime Minister's speech this morning. We will have to make some law changes, but we do have to be incredibly careful that the caution that we now start to take uh, in expanding that vigilance doesn't start to impinge upon the freedoms of law-abiding New Zealanders. And I think, sir, conversely, law-abiding New Zealanders would expect us to keep their lives free and safe from this sort of threat.